for the benefit of those who uh, are overseas, I should mention that uh, in the past decade or so, it has become a practice in Australia to formally commence a gathering, large or small, religious or secular, with an acknowledgement that we are living on the lands occupied for millennia by the ancestors of Indigenous Australians. And the acknowledgement that we use is, I begin this webinar by acknowledging the traditional custodians of all the lands on which we meet. I also acknowledge our gratitude that we share these lands today, our sorrow for the costs of that sharing, and our hope that we can move in unity to an Australia that is fair and just for all its Indigenous peoples. And uh, by way of an opening prayer, I will uh, say the prayer for peace and justice in Ukraine that's been issued by the Australian Catholic bishops. God of peace and justice, who change the hardened heart and break the power of violence, we entrust the people of Ukraine to you. Protect them in this time of peril. Let them know not death but life, not slavery but freedom. You are father of all, we are brothers and sisters. Give us the strength to live that truth in love, choosing peace, not war, through Christ our <clears throat> Lord. Amen. Um, Thank you. Back to you, uh, Stephen. Thanks very much, Brian. And now it's my pleasure and privilege to introduce Eric Mahieu, who is a priest from the Diocese of Lille in the north of France. I've known Eric for 20 years since he first published uh, Eve Congar's Journal of Vatican II a huge undertaking in itself. I'll show you the actual French version here. Uh, two huge long volumes indicative of the, the work that Congo did at the council and also indicative of Eric's work too. The footnotes themselves are an odyssey um, of identifying people that Congo mentioned in, in his journal and telling the story of Vatican II. Eric joined us in Bangkok in 2002 for one of our first Cardine Community events and also presented uh, some of some of Congar's work at that time. And since then, he's continued his research and teaching at the Catholic Institute of Paris. And today he's going to share a few words with us on Yves Congar's theology of the laity. I could perhaps just indicate that uh, Congar was very close to Joseph Cardine the founder of the Young Christian Workers Movement. And uh, it's always been of great interest to those who work uh, with the Cardine movements in Australia, the Young Christian Workers and the Young Christian Students Movement, but also many other specialised Catholic action movements around the world. Mm -hmm. So Eric will present to us today uh, some of Yves Congar's uh, Theology of the Laity, as he mentioned prior to we, just before we started. Uh, Congar's work is like the Pacific Ocean, and today it'll be an entry, perhaps surfing a few waves of Congo's work. Thanks very much, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Stefan. And I am very pleased to speak with you about uh, Yves Conga. And uh, just after the Whit Sunday, uh, the Pentecost, and uh, it um, makes us, us feel the, the, the Catholicity of the church and uh, this link we can make by uh, visio conference. And to begin with, uh, Conga is, um, is coming back in a sense in, in, uh, in the church, I think. Uh, 15 years ago, uh, I was in Rome and they said, uh, oh, Conga, no, uh, the seminarians are not interested in Conga. Uh, it's an old man. And now again, uh, the, the Conga is, uh, is uh, in, in the actuality of the church, it seems that Pope Francis is uh, keen on Conga. Um, he does not mention it, him very often, but uh, sometimes. And um, I think there are many, many things in common. So, but uh, um, the objective of my uh, uh, short speech is to introduce the ideas of Conga on uh, Leyte and um, to see him as a precursor, precursor, as he likes to say, uh, I am like John the Baptist. I opened the way. Conga has opened the way to many uh, developments in the church. 
he was not alone, but he was a, a main actor in this development, which um, arrived to the Vatican II. And um, I, I will begin to say some words about the, the main purpose of Congar uh, in his life. Then I will, uh, I shall um, uh, stop um, a moment on his main uh, book uh, on laity, uh, Jalon pour une théologie du laïka. Um, uh, it means uh, um, a lay, a, uh, lay people in the church. And his book is, is uh, writ, written in uh, 52 and published in 53. And this book had a great uh, uh, effect in the church and prepared the council. And then I, will, I, I shall see uh, his activity and his uh, participation in the council and the result he, he found in the council. And, and then, of course, um, I shall see a little also his, his, his continuation of work after the council. And I will conclude to say what is the main, uh, the main uh, uh, knowledge, the main things we can retain from Congar on the laity. First of all, uh, Congar is um, a French Dominican, of course, and uh, a theologian which, uh, who wants to go outside of what uh, Alberigo um, historians called the tr tridentinism, tridentinism, the tridentine uh, post-Tridentine post uh, theology, which is um, focused on the, the, the um, juridical side of the church, the canon, canonical side of the church. And uh, he wants to retrieve uh, the great tradition of, uh, of the theology with his friends uh, in the Dominican uh, order, uh, Chenu, well-known, and also Ferré. They wanted to... Um, find uh, a new way of uh, working in theology and uh, to find the, the old sources, the old sources uh, in the Bible, in, in the patristic period, also in the liturgy. And Conga was specialized in ecclesiology and ecumenism. And in this field, he wants to retrieve um, uh, a broad notion of the church. And his, um, his aim is to help the people of God uh, to uh, live, to, to live itself in, 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 the, in the church and to develop his capacity in the church. So um, Conga is not a theologian en chambre, we say in French. Theologian en chambre means uh, someone just inside his room and in, in his books, he, he had many contacts with uh, uh, GOC at the beginning, uh, youth, Christian youth um, from Cardain, and uh, he had also contacts with other Christians, and all these contacts uh, uh, were useful to ask the good questions about what is the church. Uh, ecclesiology is about what is the church and what is the ch church mission. So uh, he had these questions, also the questions of other Christians, um, other Christian communions, Orthodox and Protestants, and also the questions of people of his time. And um, spe especially, uh, he had to um, write a conclusion on uh, uh, a survey in 1953, 1953, a survey on unbelief, unbelief in France, of course, but also in Europe, unbelief. Um, what are the reasons of unbelief? And uh, his conclusion is that uh, the church must change. The church must uh, change uh, its face to appear new and to, sh to show its uh, real face, which is uh, too much juridical, too much as a system, an organization, and not the people and the body of Christ. So um, he had also um, contacts with other churches, and he wrote a book in uh, 37 on um, uh, the unity of Christians, uh, divided Christians, uh, searching unity. And he said in this book that um, 
the reunification of Christianity would um, change the church itself, the, the Catholic church. And uh, so he was suspected because uh, he had an idea of the church changing itself and not just repeating and fixing itself in the, in the past. So he wants that uh, the church change uh, its, its face, its, uh, um, its, its life, to, to be uh, in mission in the world and to, to, um, to go in the world and uh, not just to be um, separate with the world, with the world, I think. And also uh, his work was not just to hear the questions, but as to find answers to, um, to go in the past, in the tradition, the Bible, the scriptures, uh, the patristic tradition, the liturgy, uh, which uh, gives uh, a broad notion of, of, of the church. And so his work is also uh, always changing. I said that uh, his work is like a notion because uh, he wrote many, many articles, many books, and his, his thought, his theology is always evol evolving. It is evolving. So. Um, I like uh, the, the, the expression of uh, models of the church and uh, every Doris, uh, an American theologian said that uh, we can study the models of the church and we can say that uh, Conga has uh, developed several models of the church in his life. Um, the, the historians are not uh, uh, all in the same agreement, but we can see there are at least two or three different congars. So it's not easy to, to, to speak about him, but um, we can see uh, an evolution uh, before the council and in the council, the evolution of congar. Uh, I would say just um, a word on, on this big book, um, Jalon, uh, Jalon pour une théologie du laïka. Uh, we could uh, translate in French milestones. Um, the English translation say uh, lay people in the church, lay people theology. Yes, but it's a mile, milestones means uh, steps, uh, means uh, we are searching. We have not all the uh, completeness of things, of ideas, but we are looking for a theology of the lay people. So there are milestones. And um, I would like to say uh, some words on this book, which is really important and uh, which announces the Council, Vatican II. And uh, uh, the book was translated before the Council and it has a great impact on, on the ideas on the uh, Lumen Gentium and uh, also uh, other texts. First of all, in this uh, book, uh, there is a, a little joke um, uh, that Conga uh, gives at the beginning. It was uh, a cardinal, uh, a Cardinal Gasquet in English, and he said that uh, someone uh, preparing to baptized to be baptized asked uh, to a priest, uh, "What is the position of a lay man, a lay person in the church?" And the priest answered. Uh, the position is, is of the lay man, the lay person, is uh, kneeling before the altar, uh, the first position. The second is uh, sitting in front of the pulpit when the priest preaches, and it is the second one. But the cardinal adds this. Uh, the priest has, uh, um, has not given all the answers. The third answer is, the lay person uh, puts its, its hand in his purse, in his bursa to take some money for the church collection. So it's a way to say that uh, um, there is a lot to do in the church as a time, as at the time of Conga to uh, give more, more importance on, on the, lay, um, the lay person. And uh, Conga said that uh, uh, the lay people uh, are uh, a subordinated order in the church. He says this in the book, but uh, they, they, they see now that they have an, uh, a real active uh, membership in the church. 
So uh, we see in this uh, uh, little phrase uh, that uh, Conga is not a re re revolutionary uh, theologian. He will always say that uh, uh, lay people are subordinated to the hierarchy. And the word is a bit obsolete today to say subordinated, but he wants to recover the activity and to see the activity of uh, lay people in the church and to give them their own um, place. So the, the theology of Conga is, um, is here to accompany a movement in the church, uh, the movement of the first decades of the 20th century. He sees this movement first in the liturgy, in the liturgy, in the liturgical movement, um, there is uh, the idea that the, the, the lay persons are not just following the mass and the prayers, but are active, and they try to, in this movement, to give an active uh, role in, in the liturgy. You know, when I, I celebrate the mass, um, sometimes I see people coming for communion, and they just open the mouth and they uh, wait for me to give the host. Of course, I, I give the host. But um, I like to hear the word Amen. Amen is a consent. Amen is a, 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 the answer. Amen is uh, the face of the living people of God. And so I, I feel uh, not at ease when people just open the mouth and want just me to put a host. So uh, church is a dialogue between lay people and priests. And the liturgy is the first uh, uh, field in which um, there is a necessity to uh, see the, the importance of lay people. Um, Conga also, of course, uh, is, is aware and know well, knows well the, the development of Catholic action in, uh, is in, in Belgium at the beginning of his formation. And um, he has contacts with the GOC of Cardain. He sees also that the priest, I see in the, in the book, the priests uh, begin to uh, convert, to convert, he says, on the chapter of clericalism. So this is in 53, 53, uh, to go out of clericalism. We speak a lot about this today. And uh, I found the, the word in, in the book in 53. And the cler clerical attitudes, uh, some priests, or not all, but they want to uh, convert. I like the word. In fact, this clericalism is in their training, in their formation. Um, it's not just a known, their own uh, idea, but uh, clerical habits. And also, Congar says, there is also the movement of the, of the history of the world, not just of the church. So um, he feels the necessity of a lay, a theology for the lay people, and is asked um, in his contacts to prepare this uh, lay, this theology of the lay people. But he says also at the beginning of the book that um, this theology uh, needs um, a, a complete view of the church. So an ecclesiology, um, a treaty, uh, which a treatise, which would uh, present all the church mission and the church reality before speaking about lay persons. And this is always the case. We cannot speak about lay uh, persons and the laity without seeing what is a church and what is the mission of the church. So he has not done these three ties. He had not enough time and he was always improving his, his, uh, his view of the church and he was always discovering new ideas. And he was always, um, he was always solicited to, uh, to speech, to write on different subjects. So uh, he had no time to write his treatise, De Ecclesia, on the church. But he prepared the way. He was a precursor. He was John the Baptist. And uh, in, in this book, so um, he says this, uh, this uh, idea, this uh, view, which is a premonitory of the Council Vatican II, if the, uh, the church opens itself largely um, to the lay people, the church will know uh, a spring. We are in spring in, in, in Europe. The church will know a spring and it will be like a vigil of Pentecost. 
So in, in this way, in 53, he speaks like Pope John XXIII. The, the council is like a Pentecost, should be like a Pentecost for the Pope the XXIII. And uh, in, in this book, um, he will use, and this I, I, I go to the main ideas of the book, he will use um, a model uh, which will be uh, used also in, in the council, um, the model of the three functions of Christ, uh, who is uh, priest, king, and prophet. And the three, we call it in, in theology, tria munera, the three functions of Christ, uh, who has the Messiah is uh, high priest, the king, and the prophet. And uh, it tries to uh, synthesize all the activity of, of Christ and also of the church, which is the body of Christ, in these three functions. He says that, of course, not always, not all the matter, not all the activity of the church is uh, uh, inside the three functions. And he adds two chapters in his book, uh, one on the church as a community and a communion, and one book on the church as apostolic uh, working, in the apostolic working. So uh, in all these uh, uh, functions, um, priesthood, kingship, and, and prophet, prophetism, he says that uh, it is not on, only the, 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 the clergy, the hierarchy, which operates, but all the people. And he sees, he sees that in the history, um, the lay people had a very important role, which has disappeared, in a sense, in the history, an uh, important role in the three fields and the three functions. The lay people, uh, all the people of God, has a priestly mission, a royal mission, and a prophetic mission. But in this uh, church, also the institution, the hierarchy, has a specific role. And all the problem is to link the two, the role of the hierarchy and the role of the people of God. But before studying the, the three functions, uh, Congar uh, tries to, to see what is a lay person. What is a lay person? It seems very useful to, very uh, easy to say what is a lay person today. Well, um, not so, not so, uh, because the, in the history, um, the world has uh, different meanings. And you see that in the medieval, medieval uh, period, um, the lay person is uh, described um, in uh, relation with the monks, the monks, and also in relations with the uh, priests and uh, clergy. You see that in the medieval time, um, there is a, a sort of uh, description as um, as antithetic of monks, um, because the monk is a real Christian, and um, and the, the lay person is uh, devaluated by this comparison. Also, in the comparison with the, the clergy, the the, the, the the lay person is seen as a person who receives from the clergy, and so it's a passive role. So he says, well. We can say that the lay person is not a monk, is not a, a priest, a member of the clergy, but we have to see the positive side. And to see the positive side for him is to say that the lay person is living his faith in the world and through the world. So um, if we see the clergy, for in the clergy and the monk, the monks, they are outside the world, the living world, and this is a problem in the, uh, in the theology of Conga. He sees these people, religious people and priests and clergy outside the, the, the condition in the world. And, but he sees that the, the lay person are inside the world. They have to work there to build the kingdom of God. So they are necessary to this uh, work of the body of Christ extending in the world and building the, the kingdom of God. So when, when uh, Conga looks at the, uh, um, the three functions, um, he sees in their history all the examples in which we see that the people, the lay persons, 
were quite active in, in the church. And first of all, in the sacerdotal um, function, um, at this time, um, the word sacerdos, uh, priesthood, is uh, reserved to the clergy. And Conga, uh, after all, this, or all the, the anti-Protestant uh, activities and thoughts, uh, shows that in the past, uh, in the long tradition, in the old tradition, um, every Christian and all Christian is a priest, is uh, as a sacerdotal role, and the the the, the role of the uh, clergy of the hierarchy is to join this uh, offering, this sacrifice, uh, living sacrifice of the Christian to the sacrifice of Christ. So it is achieving the the the, the sacerdotes, the, the priesthood of the lay person, in, and especially in the mass. So the um, Conga is there preparing what uh, the council will say, that uh, there is um, a real uh, uh, priesthood of the lay person, and not, as say the conservative part of the council, just a, um, a metaphorical uh, uh, sacrifice and a metaphorical such a priesthood. It's a real one. The, on, on the second point of um, the functions, second function is um, the function of prof the prophetic, sorry, the prophetic function uh, in which also Conga shows that uh, the lay people have a real uh, role in uh, um, in giving the word and uh, no, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. The second, the second function is a, a royal function, and uh, this function is uh, not reserved to the clergy. Of course, the clergy, the hierarchy, is uh, governing the church. But Conga uh, shows that in the history and um, in the first uh, in the first centuries, and then in the medieval times. Um, the lay persons are associated to the clergy to, um, for instance, to uh, choose and elect the bishops to um, organize councils and meetings and to uh, participate in the decisions, in uh, all decisions. Um, in the councils, medieval councils, lay per people have a part. They are not the voting people that they can inform, and they have also to give their assent and to, um, uh, to be uh, implied in the process. So what, what we know uh, today in the synodical, synodal process is uh, in fact not a, a newness, not something new, but something retrieved in the past. And also in the decisions, um, there is the, what we can call the custom, the, the coutume, custom, which are um, the organization of the church at the lower, well, at, at the lower part. In fact, in the, in the local church, many customs are made by the lay persons and just approved by the, the clergy. So there is a real active part of the lay people in the royal function of the church. And the third, the third of these three functions, the prophetic functions, um, is also uh, a place where Conga uh, shows um, the census fidelium, the census of the faithful people who have to uh, say, uh, to explain and to teach also the faith um, in, the, in the church. So it shows that in the, the church is a communion in which uh, the, the tradition is uh, communicated to, um, to the people. It is not only the priest who communicates the faith, and it is the communion inside the communion that we receive uh, the, the message of the gospel. And then he, he looks at the, the community and the community life in the church, and he sees that what... Um, happens in the old church in the ancient centuries, the first centuries, and which has disappeared, is the communion uh, between the people, between the people. 
uh, it shows that uh, this communion between the people existed and has disappeared because the, the hierarchy uh, has centered every uh, movement uh, in, in the church. So the movement is not um, between the people, but the movement is descendant, is coming down from the hierarchy and not a, a real exchange between people. It shows that in the small communities, and uh, small groups, uh, people are re retrieving the real sense of the uh, uh, church, which is not only a system, institution, but also a community. This, uh, these two words are very important, institution and community. In fact, um, in, in these years, uh, Conga has a, a model in which uh, institu the institution is generating the community. The institution is first and the hierarchy is first and then it generates a community. So there is a sort of priority of the institution and then the community receives the spirit to leave what it, ha it has received from the institution. So this uh, position of Conga has been criticized uh, this sort of uh, dualistic vision, uh, institution and community. In fact, in the, in the approach of the Council, Vatican II, Conga will change his view of uh, this model. He will say that the church is not made of two um, aspects, institutions and community, it will say that uh, the church is a structured community and that the, 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 the main, the main uh, objective is to see what is the community, how it is structured, but the main, um, the primacy in the church must be on the being Christian. The, the, the structure is to serve this Christianity, this being Christian. The, the structure is at the service. And so in, in the preparation of the Council, uh, Conga is evoluting to show that um, we don't have uh, this couple of uh, structure, um, institution and community people, um, the laity, but we have a community served by, by uh, ministers. So the, the, this first image was the couple priesthood, laity, and his new image, the new image he gives is a, a community and ministers. And after the councils, he will develop uh, this theology of the ministers in the church. So in the, in the laity is less important from, for him as an expression, because um, he shows that he has described the laity as in uh, relation and in a way in some opposition to the priesthood, but no, the priority given by the Council is to the people of God as a being Christian. So for him, the Council has uh, given um, the main change in the theology of the laity when it decided that the second chapter of Lumen Gentium would be on the people of God. And in fact, the fourth chapter on, on the laity is less uh, important than it could be because uh, the laity is, uh, the this fourth chapter is uh, taking again what is said in the third, in the second chapter. Um, the laity is, uh, of course, the main part of the people of God. And it has, uh, it has in, in this people of God uh, a secular character, yes. But all the church has also a secular character. All the church is inserted in the world. So um, at the end, um, we can ask if uh, Conga has a real theology of the, lay, of the laity, or if Conga developed by this theology of the laity, uh, the theology of the people of God, which is more important for him at the end of, the, of, his, uh, of his life. So, um, I must maybe conclude, no, uh, this, this part. I have some time, a little time. What time? Yeah, no problem. Sure. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, I would say that uh, 
um, there is an evolution in the theology of Conga. First, he's describing the laity in, uh, in um, relation, interaction with the priesthood. And then at the council, um, there is a change because uh, the, the, the main, the main uh, objective is to see the reality of Christian life described by the three uh, functions. The Christian life is the life uh, of priesthood, of royal priesthood, and of prophetic priesthood. So um, the Christian is uh, uh, has a primacy in the vision of the church, and uh, his book in 1571 will be um, Ministers and Ecclesial Communion. He, he will not speak about lay persons, but Ecclesial Communion and ministers at the service of this church. So what, uh, what about the lay people? The lay people are the main part. And in uh, say the Council, they leave their faith uh, in the, all the activities of the world and the family, the work, um, jobs, professions, and culture, politics. And uh, in fact, uh, Conga um, has a very, uh, how to say, a Platonician view of the clergy, which is outside the world. In fact, after the Council, we see that all the church is uh, inside the society. The, the, the clergy is not uh, outside the world. And also the religious people, um, religious communities are not outside the world, like the monks uh, for Conga. And that the secular, the secular character is uh, uh, a real question for uh, the theology today. Uh, is it really a character of uh, uh, the laity or is it a character of the church? In, the church itself is secular. It means the, the church is inside the world and has to, um, to give the, the witness of Christ inside this world, to transform the world, and to make the world be the kingdom of God. So um, for me, the main, the main, uh, the main uh, contribution of Conga uh, on the laity is not simply to uh, give more importance to the laity in, in terms of um, kind of struggle between laity and priesthood. It is not simply to give more importance and more place and more power. It is to see um, that all share the, the, the same mission, the same uh, functions, which, is, which are the functions of Christ to be in this world, uh, a priestly people, um, a royal people and a prophetic people. So the, the, the laity uh, is understanding its mission inside the people of God. And the ministers are helping these people to, to work inside the world. So um, for me, the, at the end, the, the, main, the main contribution of Conga is uh, on, on the Holy Spirit uh, at the end of his life, because at the end of his life, the last decades, you will see that the, the Spirit is not coming after the institution and uh, the generation of the community, but the, the, the Holy Spirit is also instituting uh, the church lies Christ, Christ, the glorious Christ, the risen Christ, and also the Holy Spirit are co-instituting the church. Uh, the church is made by Christ and the Holy Spirit. Um, so his Christ Christological view of the church is balanced by uh, 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 the pneumatic, uh, pneumatology, a view of the Holy Spirit, uh, which uh, is also creating the church. Well, I spoke, and no, I don't know if it's uh, if you if you could understand what I try to say because conga is is a is a notion, uh, and um, he tried to to show all the implications of the of the lay person, but he tried most of all to uh, situate the church inside the history of salvation and to uh, give its uh, aim uh, to all the people of God. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric, for that magisterial presentation and introduction to the uh, thought and evolution of uh, Conga's thought 
particularly interesting to see uh, his thinking before the council, through the council, and after the council, which certainly kind of reflects, I think, our experience of the church here in Australia. Um, I did want to actually give people the chance to break up into small groups, but unfortunately our Zoom expert is not here, so I think I'll have to give that a miss. But uh, um, there may be among you, there may be some of you who would like to make a comment or ask a question. Um, please indicate, please feel free to turn on your microphone at this point and speak up because I cannot see you all on, on my screen. So if anybody would like to ask a question or make a comment, now is your chance to participate. I see that David Maloney has a question. David, would you like to speak your question, share your question? Not really, Stephen. I, I just, I just uh, thought I picked up uh, Eric saying that uh, after the council, Congo developed the idea of ministry of the laity, but it might have been min mission. I wasn't sure. Yes, yes, we 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 can see that in the in the works of Congo after the council. Uh, well, he spoke about lay people, but he's more interested in the idea of communion. And uh, the church has a communion uh, in which uh, some people have ministries and also some many people have charisms. So uh, the idea is also before the council and the charisms are uh, in his uh, theology, but is uh, more uh, keen on this idea that everybody um, in, in the church is, um, is taking part with his charisms and uh, that some people have ministries and that the big question is to organize these ministries and to see the different kinds of ministries, um, occasional services, um, uh, saying also that the service is uh, a dimension of every Christian life. So uh, for him, every, every, uh, every Christian is serving in his place but there are uh, fundamental services and uh, which which are called ministries. Uh, I don't hear. I don't I hear. see another question there from. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce your name. Uh, Bay N. Would you like to uh, share your question? In the chat, you can see the question. Thank you, Eric, for a wonderful presentation. Could you unpack a little more on Congar's idea of the church being secular? All of the church is inside the world, please. That's from Bay N. Zou. Yes. yes. In, um, in a way, uh, when we read Congar in his big book, uh, Jalon pour une théologie du laïka, Milestones to... Uh, the theology of lay people, we see that his idea of, uh, of the priest uh, is uh, someone uh, outside the, the world and uh, outside uh, family links, outside the professional work, outside the politics, uh, outside the culture. And he said, well, sometimes accidentally, a priest may be inside the, the culture, inside uh, he may be an artist or he may have a profession, uh, a working profession. And, uh, but in, in the sense, he was not very um, um, well placed to speak about worker priests in the 50s because uh, he was different from Chenu. Chenu uh, was very firm with, uh, with this worker priest, but for Conga, the priest is outside the current activity of the world. Is uh, and this for me is not uh, uh, it's, it's a problem with this uh, vision because uh, I, I was trained uh, in a time where small seminars have disappeared and all the seminarians and all the priests we have been and we are we are we feel we are in this world we are not outside we are not angelic people you see what I mean so the church is is not angelic the the church is inside the society. 
But in fact, we can see that, of course, the priest is inside the society. He has, um, with the, all the people of God, the same objective to uh, give uh, the gospel, to, to transmission of the gospel, and also to influence the world uh, in the sense of the gospel. Uh, but the, the, the role, specific role of the priest is a bit different, of course. But it's not outside family questions, it's not outside uh, social questions. He has to give uh, his personal, uh, his, his ministerial uh, contribution. So all the church is, is secular, it means all the church is inside the world. Brian, you've got a question there in the chat. Would you yeah. like to share it? Yes. Yes, I will. Uh, it's bad grammar. To what extent uh, were Congo's views on the laity informed by his contact with lay organisations? Eric, you mentioned uh, Cardine, contact with Cardine. I wonder to what extent that informed uh, Congo's uh, position and uh, what uh, contact did he have with other lay organisations uh, in this, uh, particularly in this period leading up to Vatican II. Thank you. Yes. With um, Conga, uh, had some contacts with the Catholic Action, of course. Um, first of all, when he was in uh, near Lille and, and he was uh, in the training um, house of uh, Quint Laton near, near Tournai, and um, he sees the, the implication of lay people in the mission, apostolic mission, and um, he sees also the, the, um, the question, the big question for him is to, um, to understand the, the meaning of Catholic action, what is uh, the statute of uh, the, the lay people in the Catholic action, um, because the Pope, uh, Pope uh, Pius XI uh, uh, said that Catholic action is a participation to the apostolic, uh, um, uh, to the apostolates of the hierarchy. And this could be um, ambiguous, ambiguous, because it could say that the, 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 the people in the Catholic action are inside the, the apostolate of the bishop, and uh, they are not, not more... Um, lay people, but in, in, inside the hierarchy. But it was not the idea of the Pope for Conga. Uh, and so the, 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 the succeeded the, 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 the Pope uh, uh, Pius XII, after the war, said that uh, Catholic action is a collaboration with the bishops. It is not a participation inside the mission of the bishop, but it's a collaboration. The, the, the lay persons st uh, still are lay people. Uh, they are not in the hierarchy, uh, but they are associated more closely with the bishop's mission. And he saw also that some people in the church did not want to be in the Catholic action because they, uh, they found that the, the bishops um, clericalize the, the people uh, in, in, in the Catholic action movements. Congar say it's exaggerated. It, they are not so much clericalized, but he can understand that many uh, Christian people want to be, uh, to have more freedom in the church. And uh, um, some people found that the Catholic action is too much um, controlled by the uh, hierarchy of the church. And um, he can understand it because he says that uh, the 12th century sees the reinvention of the Christian man. The Christian man is uh, a man, a man or a woman, I would say, a Christian person is, uh, is uh, uh, conducting uh, itself not by the rules uh, and all the rules of the clergy and in many details, but by the spirit of God and of course, the hierarchy, the priests have a role, but not too much, not too much. There is a kind of freedom of the people of God that Conga uh, sees very important. And also it was a, um, a little clash in the council because in the council, the French bishops were very keen on Catholic action as their troops. It is their troops. 
and the good way, of course, of uh, um, struggle for the gospel. But also there is this uh, um, desire of Christian people to be free to live in the secular world. Their, their engagement, their commitment are not controlled by uh, the hierarchy. Do, do you see what I mean? Do you want to respond, I don't Brian? Hear, I don't hear. Yeah. Do you want to respond, Brian? Yes, I uh, I can see uh, I can see the point. I actually found a very interesting quote from uh, Archbishop Daniel Mannix in uh, 1950 when he was addressing a meeting, a, a rally of YCS uh, uh, members, and he uh, referred to them as uh, uh, being uh, involved in the lay apostolate. He said, mm. uh, we once used to call it Catholic action, but uh, I don't think that's the right term. I think lay apostolate is the better description. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you, you can see in some of the early documents uh, coming out of uh, the establishment of the YCW and the YCS in Australia that there was a significant move away from uh, participation in the apostolate of the hierarchy which was very much the 1930s, early 1940s, into a, a, a view that was uh, perhaps you know, more uh, in anticipation of what happened in Vatican II with the, the notion of the lay apostle and the sharing of a mission. Hmm. Yes, in, in, the, in the, in the uh, big uh, congress in Rome in 57, um, the Pope uh, Pius XII said, uh, we have to uh, think about uh, uh, Catholic action and to, the, to open this idea of all of Christian believers, of Christian persons acting in the society and um, the label, the label Catholic action mm -hmm. may be open to um, other organizations. So it was a debate because Cardinal Sunens said that uh, Catholic action had a sort of monopoly in the church and was in, there was a discussion about uh, this question of an elite, an elite of people um, around the, the bishops. So uh, <laughs> I understand the question of, of Conga. Collaboration is more, um, is more autonomous. Uh, there is an autonomy of the, of the, uh, of the Christian lay person uh, recognized by the council. A lot of interesting things there. Um, mm -hmm. I would just maybe, because I see there's more questions in the chat and John Brown yeah. had a question. John, would you like to share your question? Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Eric. Very interesting. Um, this may seem like a very 21st century question, which Conga may not have even understood, but I was wondering whether he made any distinction between the mission of Jesus and the mission of the church? Oh, um, of course, well, this is a very big question. We could do a treatise. We could do a, a big book on this question. Um, in, there is a point in this time when uh, uh, people say that uh, uh, the church is the body of Christ, and it was quite in this idea in the 30s, uh, the, the, the mystical body, and it was a way uh, to, to go outside of a just a, um, institutional vision of the church. It is more lively. The church is the body of Christ, and we are all members of this body. So we are inside the church. The big, the, the, we, are, we, are the, we are the Christ, but also um, not only the Pope um, Pius XII saw some dangers in saying we are Christ, not, we are not Christ. We are, of course, distinct from Christ, but we are inside the body of Christ. Uh, but also um, there was this, this idea of uh, the uh, continued incarnation uh, in the church. Uh, the church is uh, um, the continuation of the incarnation. And uh, Conga said uh, at the beginning, he was, uh, he was uh, a daring, he was quite with this idea. And then he said that, that uh, reflecting with Protestant uh, uh, theologians and the critics of theologians, 
Protestant theologians, is to say that there is a, a distinction. We are not Christ. We are trying to be good disciples, but we are not Christ. So the idea of uh, uh, continuing incarnation in the church uh, of Christ is, um, um, must be, um, uh, how to say, must be, um, must get the bem a bemol, we say in music. No, it's not, it's not, it's not exact in, the, uh, in a real uh, precise sense. So the church is not a new incarnation of Christ, but it's uh, the body of Christ in the, in the spiritual sense. And also in the council, um, Conga said, we have also to say the church is the bride of Christ, the bride in the sense that she is not perfect. She has also uh, defects, but the Christ is trying to uh, purify the church. The idea of um, semper reformanda, the church must be reformed, always. She is not uh, adequate to, uh, to its model. She is not a copy of Christ, but she has to purify itself always in the history. That's very important. Merci for beaucoup. Me. Yes. Mm. All right. A lot, to, a lot to unpack there as well. Um, David has got a follow-up question. Uh, might Conga have been, and uh, no, sorry, uh, uh, where's your question, David? Uh, follow up question Post Council, was the distinction between lay ministries and the lay apostolate significant to Conga? Ah. Uh, the apostolate is, is uh, um, after the Council and uh, he sees that the, the word apostle uh, is extending itself in the text of the council. Apostle is not only the 12 and the successors, the bishops. Apostle is uh, concerning all the church. All the church is apostolic and every one of us, lay, religious, priest, and so we are uh, sharing the apostolate uh, of the church in our own place. So. Uh, then for the lay ministries, it's different. The lay ministries, Conga sees the beginning of lay ministries and uh, he sees in, in this direction uh, uh, richness because uh, uh, everybody has, has a charism, as we have many charisms to, uh, to promote, to develop, and the ministries are adequate for, with, this, with these charisms. So the ministry, he says, after the council, and during the council, he says, the ministry is not a, a single word, a singular word, 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 singular word, the ministry, as we say, le sacerdoce, the priesthood, the ministry, it was always about uh, uh, the clergy, but the ministries, as a plural word, ministries are several, are diverse. And in the church, he said, the, the, the council has permitted to see the ministries are so diversified. This was uh, lived in the church before the Council, of course. Catechism and uh, uh, many, many ministries were uh, in the liturgy, in the catechism, in, uh, also in uh, um, organizations like, like Catholic Action. There are ministries, but they are recognized in the Council. Ministries with a plural world world ministries are uh, a diversification of uh, action, but not all the people are ministers. Some are ministers and recognized by the church, but every Christian is serving the others and serving the world. So he has a very, very famous book. Um, during the council, I show, I, show, I show the book, and uh, in the new edition, because it's coming back, uh, pour une église servante et pauvre, for a, a serving and poor church, a serving church. Everybody is serving, but some have um, an, an, a recognized minister, a stable, stable minister in the church. Not only the priests and the deacons, because also I did not mention the deacons. Uh, for him, uh, the di diaconate is a very interesting question because it's, it's a minister given to people 
who are in the clergy and also in a sense uh, could be said in the in the laity so it means it, it it makes a new question for uh, the interpretation of these words laity clergy what is a deacon it's a minister <laughs> but for example um you mentioned uh, quoting congar uh you know lay people are those who live their faith in the world in the factories and uh, in their professions and that sort of thing but would conga describe what they're doing in their workplaces and as in their families as ministries or how would he how would he speak about that i don't i don't think all all the life of all christians are a ministry it's a service it's a service and the service is, uh, you say, is like an existential in the philosophical world. Uh, it's a dimension, permanent dimension of faith is service. And he likes to say that uh, uh, um, one of the main words uh, of the Council Vatican II is serving. Um, I, 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 am not, I have not been in the world to be served by to, to serve. Jesus said, I, I came to serve. So uh, the Christian also um, is a serving person. Uh, ministry is, uh, well, we, we can extend the word ministry to every service, but I think we, we lose the word at, at the end because if a word is used uh, for everything, it has no utility. So ministry is a, um, a type of activity uh, not only the priest, but and the deacons, but uh, a ministry is as an uh, official role in the church, I mean, for him. Recognize work. Yes. Great. Um, I see uh, Hillary has a question. I think you've got your hand up. You're, you're up there. Do you, do you have a question or a comment, Hillary? Only, only in terms of what Brian was saying before, in terms of the distinction between uh, Catholic action and the lay apostolate, I think Bob would probably have something to say on this as well in terms of how that was confused here in Australia and how there was a difference between Catholic action, which goes back to, to the Italian movements and the Italian work. Um, and when that came to Australia, we have had some sort of confusion about that in terms of political action, which then transferred into the Santa Maria camp. Um, so uh, my, it's, it's really more a comment than, than a question. Hmm. Yes, yes. In, Bob, in, have, in, you have your head down. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I saw that in, in the, during the council, uh, Conga uh, saw that the, the idea of Catholic action and the, the reality of Catholic action is very different from a country to another. And that uh, for him, the council should, should only uh, work on, the, on the, main, uh, the main patterns of Christian life and not to... Um, to intricate itself on, on the details of Catholic action. So the movements are organized differently in, in, in the different countries, like in the, uh, you see in the British have different notion of Catholic action and also the Italians. And uh, of course, uh, in many countries there were no, there was no uh, organized Catholic action at this time. And uh, so, uh, Conga wanted to go in, in uh, his work was to, to go in the uh, um, theological basis of uh, every um, action of, of, of a Christian. In a sense, he, he would say, if, if Conga came today, he would say that uh, Pope Francis with his idea of disciple, missionary, uh, is, uh, is right, because every Christian is a disciple and missionary. No, there are organizations to help the Christian to be a good missionary, a better missionary, but uh, on the world, the main, the main, <coughs> uh, the main uh, identity of us all is the baptism and the confirmation, and of course, the Eucharist, which nurtures our, our faith and our action. So, um, Conga sees in the Council the idea that the church has a sacramental uh, <clears throat> nature, not a juridical, but a sacramental, based on the sacraments. So, the sacraments uh, of baptism and confirmation are the 
the, the roots of uh, every action in the world and in the church. Uh, just one other comment I'd make in terms of the difference between Conga and Chenu is that, yes. that Chenu was more heavily involved with the YCW in terms of giving retreats and, and an active involvement with them, yes. more so than Conga, who's probably yes. his work on the laity was more at a theological level than Chenu's, yes. who was more at, a, more at a practical level. And just one other yes. comment, we've been trying to get the rights of the lay people in the church, the book you're referring to from the French, which is more or less out of print at the present time. But Bloomsbury, T&T Clark, who hold the rights of it, aren't allowing us to do it because they say that they will publish more of Conga in the future, but they're not. However, oh, we're yeah. still trying to look at buying the rights yeah. to have a new edition of that, as we have done with various other of Conga, yeah. including, of course, the mammoth volume, which you did the, oh, yes. Yes. which we translated into English, which we, yeah, yeah. for everybody's benefit, we are just doing a cut down version of this from 1300 pages to 400 pages, which will be out at the end of the year. Oh, yes. Maybe you should, maybe uh, <laughs> for, for those who haven't met Hillary before, which you should just mention Hillary is, I'm not sure what your title is, but anyway, the publisher, the, of, publisher of ATF, of Press. ATF mm. Press. Maybe you can put the link in the chat so people can look it up because oh, okay. I know that you, you have got a number of books, not we only have about Conga, four but books also Conga Chanu. and two of Chanu. And we're translating at the moment, Eric, uh, the Ecole Sauvage book of uh, Chenu's into English, which will be the first time that this will have ever been in English. And that oh. uh, is because of the work of um, the guy in the US whose name escapes me, who worked with Alberigio. Uh, oh. Anyway, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. But uh, yes. we are also doing two books of Etienne Puyot at the moment into English uh, on the yes. uh, Sauvage affair. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, well, of course, Chenu, Chenu was, uh, was, very, uh, was nearer to the, the working organizations and also the, the, the worker priests. And uh, so Conga was not very near, he, but he, he, and also he had an, an idea of the priest, um, which was, as I say, more um, angelical. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he sees that for a priest to work in in a, in a factory is not a proper uh, place to be. And uh, well, when when he met the people of Mission de France, uh, Mission of France, Mission de France in Limoges in '53, there was a, a kind of uh, deception because he could not. Uh, he could not um, understand the questions of the, the of this priest who wanted to be uh, um, in a new uh, position and a new uh, way of doing and not just in the parishes so uh, th this is a little problem because he's uh, i think he's fast, he's um, he's mar marked by his uh, his formation his own training which was the training of his time so uh, Conga is a precursor, and, but he's also linked with his time, we could say. Maybe we could have just one last question. I see um, Gregory Brown has a question. Would you like to share your question, Greg? Um, thank you, Eric, for your presentation. Um, my question is um, about Conga and use always the term lay ministry rather than ministry of baptised persons. Um, the, the use of the term lay leads towards clericalism, whereas what we have in common and our activity is sacramental and it arises from our baptism, which we all share, even though in different ways we have different gifts. Uh, just um, comment on that, please. Uh, I didn't understand your question. Uh, your <laughs> can you repeat your, your question? Your... Um, yeah, it's just that uh, Conga refers to use the word lay ministry, yeah. lay whatever, um, yeah. and that actually leads to a hierarchical structure which leads to. Uh, sets up the possibility of clerical ideas, whereas mm. the emphasis on our spiritual ministry by referring to uh, us as baptised people 
Um, we are all baptised people. We have different mm -hmm. ministries uh, and different roles within the church, but our role stems from our baptism. And it, it, it sort of emphasises more what we have in common rather than a difference being lay mm. and religious or clerical mm. or whatever it might be. Yes. yes. Well, uh, for, for, for me, the, the, the first step of Conga is to see that um, everybody um, in the church is active because everybody has received the Holy Spirit. Yes. We, we have been in the, the Whit Sunday and the Pentecost, we say in France, Pentecost. So he um, says that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, habits, is, is staying in, in the baptized person, is staying inside. And it's just uh, the newness of the, on the new, uh, the new um, alliance, the new state, the, the Christianity. Uh, so everybody is active because of the Spirit. And um, also, um, before the council, he has an idea of the hierarchy as generating the, the Christian people. So in this way, um, there is a, an inequality. And uh, after the council, he, he will change his idea. Because at the beginning, he sees that, first of all, there is an institution, the, the 12, the apostles, the 12 apostles. They are the structure and they generate the community. So the structure is more important and autosufficient for him. And after the council, he sees differently. He sees that all the church is a community, a communion, and the structure or the ministerial structure is uh, there to serve and to uh, accompany the, the community, not to create a community, but to accompany, to serve in his, uh, in his uh, way in life. So uh, the the equality the, the the equality is first, and the differences are second. Thank you very much, Eric. I think we've gone seventy five minutes now, which was oh. about what we set as um, our yes. limit. So I'd like time to thank everybody for time your for questions. I'm sorry, time for dinner for some of us. Time yes. for dinner for you. Time for and lunch for lunch yeah. for you. Yes. And for lunch for you, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Huh? yeah. Yes. So I'd just like to take the opportunity to, to thank you very much for that. So as I said, a magisterial presentation, and we can see how much more there is um, of that ocean to explore, um, yes. hopefully, possibly <laughs> in um, yeah. some future webinars. Um, I will mention, if you don't mind, if you see in the chat, we have a couple of ACI webinars coming up in July and September next month uh, with a South African Dominican. Uh, Joe Faulkner, who will share his experience of working with uh, young Christian workers in South Africa under apartheid, an incredible experience that, that he has to share. And in September, actually this year is the 50th anniversary of the death of Jared Phillips, who we might call the architect of Lumen Gentium. I don't know if Eric would agree, but we have Matthias Lamberich uh, from, uh, from Leuven, uh, who, will, who will give us, a, who will share some of his uh, research on on the life and work of Jared Phillips in September. There'll be more de details available about that soon. Um, but anyway, I'd just like to thank again, Eric, and thank everybody for thank participating. You. I think it has been a genuinely participative experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope to see you again in the future.